We mentioned the Ferdinand row won't go away, nor will the racism row surrounding what may well be a pretty nasty atmosphere in both Poland and Ukraine. Lee, we've heard Mario Balotelli come out with comments, Sol Campbell and others. If you had a, a son who was playing for England, would you go and watch him over there? No, I wouldn't. And I'm not naive enough to think that those weren't the worst pictures that we saw in that documentary. Yeah. But if there's any, any threat to uh, myself or my family, I wouldn't put him in a situation where it could happen. And, but what I find, uh, you know, Sol Campbell said he, he was uh, amazed that the, the championships were given to Poland and Ukraine with that sort of atmosphere. And he's right. You know, this, I just feel that the racism, sexism, are one of the agendas that have been very low down a lot of uh, uh, UEFA's agenda, the yes. FA's agenda at yes. times. And it needs to be higher up there. And when you're giving the, uh, championships to any country, you need to measure them on how they deal with racism. You know, it's not, yeah, we see it. What, what concerned me is I didn't see anybody going in and trying to deal with it. And somebody coming out saying, yes, we know we've got a problem. as because as, We had a problem in this country when I was playing. Let's not get away from the fact that I didn't allow my family to go and watch me play football because of the, the problems on the terraces. But we dealt with it in a positive way. And was, and that, was that racism towards being shattered towards you or towards them or both? It's no coincidence you didn't see many black faces or Asian yeah. faces at English grounds because yeah. of the, the abuse that was being thrown at the, the players on the pitch. And it was, but, it, it, the, but we got hold of it and people said, look, we're not going to have this within our football ground and we're going to deal with it. And there's organisations who dealt with it. Now, if they come out after seeing that and said, look, we're aware that we've got a problem and, and we, this is how we're going to deal with it, you know, we're, we, and we're going to make sure that people are safe, then I would have said, yeah, I, maybe, you know, I can, I can understand it. Because the first thing you've got to realise is accepting that you've got a problem. But yeah, people coming out saying, no, they were just pointing at the other fans and, and you know, trying to you know, pull the wool over your eyes. Ridiculous. And I think that the associations like UEFA, FIFA and the FA have to put this at the top of their agenda and not uh, react after, uh, after they find out that there's a problem. We had the same thing in Spain where there was monkey chance with yes. Sean Wright Phillips and then England were playing Spain and people said, well, what about the racist uh, abuse that Sean Wright Phillips got? Oh, they've forgotten about that. Yes, and I think, I think from memory, Spain were fined about €20,000. It was ridiculous. Nonsense. What, what is it with football's governing bodies, John? FIFA have given the World Cup to Qatar in a few years time, UEFA have given this tournament to Ukraine and Poland, what, what, is it just money is the root of everything? Well you know I hear certain people um, in football politics talking about well if, if we take football there perhaps it will cure the problem. I find that beyond patronising and incredibly naive. Mm. You cannot, you should not be able to I think uh, sort of commit um, behaviour in a really bad way and then be rewarded for it. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's appalling. The one thing I would say is that I do think that, that this centres around kind of club matches and I guess the doubts will be whether they then sort of the, the racists and the gangs and, and, and the football hooligans then, then do actually attend mm. the games of Euro 2012. But I, do, I really fundamentally disagree with, with the tournament being awarded there in the first place. I mean, it's almost as naive as kind of, you know, you, hear, you remember not so long back that Sir Blatter was suggesting that everything uh, racial taunts on, on a pitch could be solved with a handshake. Yes. Well, frankly, this isn't much further away mm. from, from Out of from touch this. wouldn't do it justice. Yeah. I mean, no, no one, Leroy, outside of Michel Patini's office, mm. believes this tournament should be here, do, do they? No, of course they don't. And you know, you talked about Matt Balotelli and, uh, and, uh, and Sol Campbell. It, but it's not just about black people, it's about people of all nationalities. You know, is it English? If you're not from Ukraine, from what I saw in that film, which obviously would well, take it there, there were problems with, were problems with uh, gays, Jews Abs and others. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that, that is racism. You know, people seem to think it's just a black and white yeah. thing. It's not. It's about culture, it's about nationality. And when you've got things like that on your telly, you know, and people are, and it's, it's obvious that these things are happening in, in Ukraine and, uh, and Poland. Then, you know, you cannot give tournaments to these to these to, to these countries until you know they say, look, we're doing something positive. We're doing education. You know, we're trying to m educate these supporters, or we're trying to make sure that the, the police are on top of it. But I didn't see any of that. I saw people getting beaten up. I haven't seen that for years. People getting beaten up in the stand, and no one going to help them. Even other people were stood back. You know, I've seen it in, with, you know, between supporters, but just because of the colour of your skin, I haven't seen that for years. And for me, that brings up massive concerns as to whether the tournament should be there. All right, well, I'll tell you what, let's get a view from the heart of the issue, from Poland. We've got a Polish journalist there. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, it's Kuba Krzysztof I think that's close enough. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Hey, good evening. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, can I just ask you first, I don't know how much you've heard of the discussion we've been having in the studio. Uh, are the polls generally aware that there is this fear, certainly here in England, 
that there could be some uh, racial problems connected with this football tournament. Yeah, of course, um, our media gave quite a bit of a reaction to the Panorama documentary uh, the day after it aired in England. Um, and people here were mainly actually just shocked and pretty sad that they were being portrayed as racist and that they would be attacking foreigners coming to our country, which is completely not true. But Cuba, it's, I don't think, you know, it's, it wasn't about the people of Poland. It was about a certain group of people in Poland and Ukraine. So are there groups of people who you mm -hmm. feel might cause a problem in these championships to, to foreigners or, or people who, who are from other, from other countries or other cultures? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that minority does exist. Obviously, I watched the documentary, so I saw those groups myself. Um, but it is a very, very small minority. And I don't see them causing any trouble during the tournament, to be honest with you. Every time I've spoken, I've had a lot of English fans uh, reach out to me on Twitter, actually. And they've just talked to me about kind of their positive experiences coming to Poland or the Ukraine on away trips with their different football clubs. And I think that's kind of like, you know, there's a small threat, but no, I don't think there will be any problems. That we so you, you're, you're completely confident, Kiba, that this has all been overblown and exaggerated and, and, and you're very satisfied there won't be any issues with it during the championships? Yeah, of course. I mean, I can't guarantee that, you know, someone's not going to get in a fight in a bar. Um, but for the most part, polls are very welcoming and really looking forward to, you know, I'd say 98% of the country is looking forward to welcoming all the different fans of Europe here and, you know, it's going to be a great party, I think, for one month. Kuba, Kuba, I must just ask you, do you think that the problem is more, any more prevalent in Ukraine than Poland? I must confess, I've, I've, I've been to Poland and Ukraine many times, and I've never felt uncomfortable in Poland, certainly. Do, do, you, think, do you feel that, that way or not? Um, I mean, I've never been to the Ukraine personally. But, I mean, I don't feel very comfortable saying either way about the Ukraine. Um, I, do, I mean, I only feel comfortable defending Poland, really, and that's, I haven't witnessed any of that. Um, I have some friends coming over who are black, and I had no issue inviting them over for the tournament. So, what about the? Um, but yeah, I don't feel. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kiba. What, what about the policing of the event? Um, certainly in Poland, obviously you can't speak for for Ukraine. Um, have there been mm -hmm. any stories in the papers in in Poland in terms of the police are expecting trouble or not? Um, not really. I mean, they said they're going to be obviously extra units um, on duty. Um, there's going to be a heightened police presence that, of course, will be ready to deal with any problems. But people aren't expecting anything, nothing major, you know, no big fights in the streets or anything. Well, let's hope you're right. We've, we've certainly got our fingers crossed for that. Thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight, Cuba. Yeah, thanks so much. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.